Hello and welcome back to my political news. Still on the retreat for the senior police officer, with the team, the imperative of the Nigerian police strategic plans for peaceful general election 2023. You're about to listen to the full speech of the chief of army staff, General Loki Irabo, as well as the minister of defense staff, Mohammed Magari Magidi, also the chief host, which is the governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Uzodima. Please do not forget to like this video. <laughs> Comment and share to your friends. Watch the video to the end. If you are a first time I here, please click on that red subscription button and hit on the notification bell for more of my political news coming your way. I'll be waiting for your Settle thoughts Settle with your adversaries today. while you are on the way. Otherwise, you will be handed over to the judge who will in turn hand you over to the officer. So you see the police have been in the Bible right from the beginning. They deserve a round of applause. All right, to continue in those messages, permit me to invite a man who exemplifies what you will call an officer and a gentleman. I always love to hear him speak. Ladies and gentlemen, for his goodwill message, I'd like to invite General Loki Irabo, CFR, the Chief of Defense Staff. Please, a big round of applause as he comes forward. Thank you. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Your Excellency's governors here present, our host, the IG, the Chief of Army Staff, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'd like to, on behalf of the leadership hierarchy of the armed forces, congratulate the Inspector General of Police for convening this retreat, which is geared towards the conduct of the 2023 general elections. The armed forces, by dint of constitutional provisions, have been given support to the civil authority that the police, of course, represent. And in that sense, we have been involved in all internal security operations and even conduct of elections, giving support to the police. And so we feel very strongly that this time around we should give greater support in the light of the experiences that we've had. For the armed forces, we look forward to a time when the armed forces personnel will be relieved of internal security duties. Because we believe, looking at the robust transformation that is, Mr. President is supporting, which of course the IG is also implementing, we believe that that objective, that indeed mission, will be accomplished very soon. But until then, I'd like to, on behalf of the armed forces, indeed uh, give the IG all the encouragement, letting you know that we are there to support you and other security agencies in providing security for all our citizens. And in particular, for the coming election, we'll be there, whatever in a role that were assigned as enshrined in the protocols that is already established by INEC, will be there to give all the support in order to ensure that what Mr. President desires for Nigerians, which is to have a smooth transition from the coming elections, will be achieved. On that note, let me congratulate you once again and wish everyone that is for this retreat the very best. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Thank you very much, General Loki Rabo, Chief of Defense Staff of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Can we please give him another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Mr. President, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, like we had earlier indicated, this is an opening ceremony of an event that is going to last about three days. Three days of meeting of minds, sharing of knowledge, of brainstorming, of, of course, jaw joining so that the journey to making this country, the country of our dreams, would be realized, especially 
as it's got to do with the elections which will be coming up next year. We thank those who have presented good new messages. We know there would have been others who would have wanted to, but time will fail us to list them one after the other. But we're very sure that the messages that have been presented by the representative of the chairman of INEC and that of the chief of defense staff are representative of the opinions of other stakeholders in this project. And so without any further ado, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will invite for his remarks on this occasion the Honorable Minister of Police Affairs, Alaji Mohammed Megadi Dingyadi. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the Honorable Minister as he comes up here to make his remarks. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Bahari, GCFR, Your Excellency, our host governor, the governor of Imo State, Your Excellency, the executive governor of uh, Yobe State, Your Excellency, the Chief of General Staff, and the other side is Chief Staff. The Inspector General of Police, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm highly elated to be part of the convocation of critical policing minds here today in Oweri, Imo State, to brainstorm, share thoughts, and acquire fresh insights on the best strategies for internal security, in addition to reviewing policies and plans towards ensuring success of the 2023 general elections. This highly important conference with the theme, the imperative of a Nigerian police strategic plan for peaceful elections is coming at a time when our dear country is entering another round of electionary activities culminating in general elections in the first quarter of the 2023, when Nigerians will decide on the personalities to elect as leaders to project, promote our shared vision for security, peace, and prosperity. May I therefore salute the dexterity of the Inspector General of Police, Al Ali Baba Osman, and his management team for organizing this event to deepen institutional capacity of Nigerian police to build on the gains recorded in sustaining democracy in Nigeria since the beginning of the Fourth Republic in 1999. Democracy worldwide thrives on strong institutions like the police, the electoral empire, and the judiciary. This underscores the imperative of the Nigerian police reviewing its achievements in the various el previous elections nationwide and evolve new strategies for improved performance with regards to improving security, safety, and a peaceful environment before, during, and after upcoming general elections early next year. Let me at this juncture reiterate Mr. President Muhammad Bahari's administration's commitment towards building a strong and committed policy institution with the requisite logistical leverage that will ensure free, fair, and credible elections at all times. This has been amply demonstrated by the government's strong focus on retailing policing infrastructure and implementing enhanced welfare packages for police personnel despite the challenging economic concerns. In this connection, President Muhammad Buhari in 2020 gave accelerated assent to the Nigerian Police Act 2020, which replaced the 1979 Police Act to engender a holistic reformation of the Nigerian Police. 
to bridge the, finan the, finan the financing gap and modernizing the nation's policing infrastructure, deepen the capacity of policemen to prioritize their health and other welfare needs. President Muhammad Buhari also approved the establishment of the Nigerian Police Trust Fund, which has since become operational. The Nigerian Police Trust Fund has commenced interventions through the building of policing infrastructure, supply of vehicles, arms and ammunition, bulletproof vests, protective helmets, medical items, as well as the capacity building and construction stroke renovation of residential and office accommodations, to mention just a few. At the ministerial level, a lot has been achieved through policies and programs with the overall objective of building a strong, efficient, reformed, and people-friendly police to stimulate the needed economic growth in a safe and secure environment. It is imperative at this point to also announce that work has reached advanced stage to give legal framework to police training institutions as part of ongoing reform and strategy to reposition them for enhanced efficiency, particularly in building the capacity of the cadet officers. At this juncture, I would like to make, I would like to take this opportunity to call on the leadership of the Nigerian police to see persistent call for creation of state police as a persuasive desire of the federating units to enjoy a more robust policing at the subnational levels. Therefore, this should inspire you to work harder towards meeting the expected global best policing standards in order to earn citizens' trust, support, and confidence in the present arrangement. Policing as a pivot upon which all forms of civil society revolves cannot afford to be politicized or deployed wrongly as feared in certain quarters, going by the recent experience of intolerance and dominion tendencies of political actors in some states. While government continues to advance technology and intelligence-led policing, the role of citizenry in winning the war against criminalities cannot be overemphasized. This, therefore, calls for a more positive attitude on the part of the rank and the file of the police in order to gain confidence of Nigerians and therefore making them their dependable partners in the task of securing the nation. Very critical also is the ability of the officers at the, at the strategic levels to institutionalize and to cascade the vision and thinking of the leadership of the officers at the tactical and command levels, in particular the resolve of government to ensure that the will of the people prevails in the coming elections. This can be achieved through mentorship and charismatic leadership style from the top down the line and across the various layers of command. I'm persuaded that with the quality of resource persons, facilitators that will be engaged at this conference, the ensuring conversations will generate the needed impetus for our robust policing as electioneering activities gradually inch towards the polls in a few months to come. Permit me at this point to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our host governor, His Excellency Senator Homo Zodima, for his unwavering support for the Nigerian police and the other security services in Imo State, and for hosting this election, this strategic 23 election security course. Your Excellency, we appreciate you and the good people of Imo State for promoting enduring security, safety, and peace in the Southeast geopolitical zone. Respect, they say, is reciprocal. One of the biggest projects of the Ministry, one of the biggest projects of the Ministry of Police Affairs is the Data Crime Center, where we have one center located in each of the six geopolitical zones. That of the Southeast is located in Uweri, Imo State, just behind the government house in Imo. It is also our intention in, to locate the proposed National Fusion Center for the Southeast Geopolitical Zone in Imo State in appreciation of the support the police is enjoying in Imo State. 
As we move towards the 2023 elections, I call on all stakeholders, including the press, to continue studying the emerging threats, analyze and evolve measures to assist the police in performing its constitutional responsibilities before, during, and after the 2023 general elections. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your kind attention and uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am very mindful of the fact that we have here today men and women who work tirelessly so hard. So it's important uh, that I point out, before you get tempted to yawn or fall asleep, that this program is being carried live on five stations, AIT channels, TVC, Arise, and NTA. So please fight the urge to fall asleep or yawn uh, because you'll be on national, you're on national TV. All right. Having said that, uh, I also like to quickly uh, apologize. For the sake of time, we were supposed to take some more goodwill messages from uh, the Chairman House Committee on, Public, on Police Affairs represented today by Honorable Linda Chubaik Bazu and uh, the former IGP, Dr. Mike Mbama Okiro. But for the sake of time and His Excellency's tight schedule, we had to cut short those, so my apologies uh, as we make progress. We like to make the best use of time. We don't want to abuse the privilege and the honor he's granted us. Having said that, um, it is worthy of note that um, our president has become a friend of Imo State. Uh, it's unprecedented that he's been here for three good times now. And ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce the man who has shown that when there's synergy between the state and the federal, that mountains can be moved. And I'm talking about our host, His Excellency, the distinguished Senator Hope Uzadema, the host of today's event. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, as you come to talk to our people. Please, a big round of applause, a round of applause. Excellency President Mohamed Buhari GCFR, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Right Honorable Speaker, Federal House of Representatives, ably represented by Honorable Linda Chuba Ibazo, and other members of the National Assembly who are with us here this afternoon. Your Excellency, Honorable Mai Mela Bunu, CON, the Governor of Yobe State. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Imo State, Professor Placid Njoko. The Speaker, Imo State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Emeka Ndoka, and other principal officers and members of Imo State House of Assembly. The President, Court of Appeal, ably represented by the presiding judge of the Federal Court of Appeal, Oware Division, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Honorable Boss Mustafa, ably represented by the Permanent Secretary General Services, Honorable Minister of Police Affairs, Mohammed Maigari Dingadi, and other honorable ministers, particularly my own Minister of State Education, Right Honorable Good Luck Nana Opia. The Acting Chaperson Police Service Commission, Milor Justice Clara Bata Ogumbi, the Chief of Defense Staff, my brother, 
General Lucky Irabo, and other service chiefs, the Chief of Army Staff, the Chief of Air Staff as represented, and that of the Naval Staff, ably represented. My Action Inspector General of Police, Usman Alkali Baba, <laughs> Heads of Parliamentary Organizations in Nigeria, members of the various political parties and their representatives, Deputy Inspector General of Police, Assistant Inspector General of Police, and other senior police officers that are participating today in this retreat. Members of Imo State Expanded Executive Council and other government and political appointees, both in Imo State and at the federal level. Members of the heads of security agencies in Imo State, heads of anti-graft agencies in Nigeria. The chairman of Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mohamed Yakubu, ably represented by General Kale Modibo, the National Commissioner. All retired Inspector Generals of Police, retired DIGs, AIGs, and other senior police officers retired. The Chairman of the State Council of Traditional Rulers, His Royal Majesty Ez Dr. E.C. O.K.K. C.F.R. National President of Nigerian Bar Association, ably represented here. Your Royal Highnesses, Ndieze, Media Executives, Distinguished invited guests, distinguished resource persons to this retreat, participants to the police conference stroke retreat, captains of industry, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed on behalf of the government and people of Imo State that I most heartily welcome you all to Imo State and to this three day retreat of senior officers. The Minister of Police Affairs, Alaj Mohamed Megari Dingadi, the Inspector General of Police, and other very important dignitaries gracing this occasion today. I welcome also all the top echelon and senior officers of other sister agencies, both the military and the paramilitary, who will be taking part in the three day retreat here in Oweri. It is noteworthy that this retreat of senior security chiefs is taking place a few weeks after the, the state hosted a similar event organized by the Nigerian Army. I am personally delighted that on both occasions, Imo State emerged the preferred destination and the host of such significant and very important events involving around our army, armed forces. There is no doubt in my mind that hosting this event will help to reassure both residents and visitors that Imo State is safe again for businesses and tourism. All thanks to President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR. I listened to the police, Inspector General of Police, when he commended the president for approving almost all his requests and for the support the most state government through me is also given to the Nigerian police. But one silent point is that my support to you is possible because of the support Mr. President is giving to me. <laughs> I believe that the presence of the top brass of the police and other security agencies in the state for the next three days, we also help to restore the much needed confidence in our people and help fortify our sense of security and safety. I hope you will all find the time to move around and interact with our people and take advantage of your visit to behold for yourselves the profound transformation of the state which my administration inherited only a couple of years ago. We are known for our hospitality. I therefore urge you all to feel at home in Imo State. I was personally delighted and somewhat flattered when I learned about your reasons for choosing Imo State as the venue for this conference. The first of it all is the cordial relationship that exists
between my administration and the security agencies. The next I understand is a successful containment of insecurity in the state. And finally, my undying commitment to the unity and the indissolubility of the Nigerian nation. I thank you. I thank you so much for these kind acknowledgments and the endorsements. I would like to assure you that we will not rest on our oars, as I do not intend to relent in my determination to leave a legacy of a safe, peaceful, and prosperous Imo state. Going forward, this conference is crucial since it is aimed at evolving strategies towards discharging the duties of the police ahead of the general elections scheduled for 2023. It is therefore gratifying to know that history will remember that it was in the beautiful city of Oweri during my tenure as the governor of Imo State that the police met and planned how to give Nigeria one of the most peaceful elections in its history. I say this rather prophetically because I wish and foresee a very peaceful and credible election in 2023. The President has made a commitment towards this, and the Independent National Electoral Commission has also assured us that this will be the case. As you may know, I have remained a relentless advocate of free, fair, and peaceful elections in the country. I have always maintained that every election dispute can and should be resolved peacefully through available legal channels, not by violence or by heating up the polity. When we as politicians accept the fact that losers of today can be winners of tomorrow, then we will see no reason to rock the boat when we lose. I believe that this conference should look more critically at this sole aspect of politics. Perhaps if you do, you may find a lasting solution to the threat which election losers continually pose to our national cohesion. I'm happy that the police high command has chosen a perfect team for this, con for this retreat. The team which is the imperative of a Nigerian police strategic plan for a peaceful election is not only apt but reassuring as we approach the general elections of 2023. Permit me, therefore, to suggest that this strategic plan should include a recommendation that all the candidates in all the elections must undertake under oath to denounce violence. They should also commit, they should also commit and sign an undertaking that all disputes over election results can only be challenged peacefully through the court processes and that the parties to the dispute must be bound by the outcome of that process. I make this submission because it is obvious to me and other objective observers that post-election violence constitutes a major threat to our democracy. Whereas an election could be adjudged peaceful and free, the refusal of some politicians to accept an outcome of that election or their defeat often throws up more severe threats to our democracy. As we all know, the police is at the forefront of ensuring compliance, peace and order at any election in Nigeria. The involvement of other security agencies during the conduct of elections is purely complementary. Their role, therefore, is to help you carry out your constitutional duties of maintaining law and order during the process. As such, you must take this responsibility very, very seriously. I expect that you will come out of this retreat far better aware and prepared for the challenges ahead. I believe that, the, that with the innovations evolved by the Independent National Electoral Commission, all that is needed now is a contentious and competent police to conduct a credible, fair, and transparent elections in the country in 2023. Apart from preparing the police for the immediate task ahead, which is the 2023 elections, they also have to be prepared for the daily challenge of fighting crime and criminality. 
For some time now, it does seem that the criminals have been armed with sophisticated weapons that have emboldened them to even attack the police, not just at the checkpoints, but also at police stations. To be frank, this is unacceptable in any civilized society. Let me therefore, let me therefore use the opportunity of this auspicious event to appeal to both governments and other stakeholders, especially the private sector, to continuously support the police at this point when they are going through the most challenging phase of policing and law enforcement in the history of our country, Nigeria. As we know, the protection and security of lives and property should be the concern of all and sundry. To this end, I appeal to big corporations to also step out and do more to support the police by assisting them with the provision of operational, communication, logistic equipments, and technologies they need for greater efficiency. I am aware that various states have also been supportive of the police and will continue to help in that regard. For us in Imo State, we have long realized that a well-equipped and trained police is a sure way of combating crime. Let me use this opportunity, therefore, Mr. President and distinguished guests, to reaffirm my unflinching support for the police and other security agencies in Imo State. I promise that my government will continue to do whatever we can to make their job easier, safer, and more efficient. I'm aware that supporting the police goes beyond training and the provision of equipment. The welfare of police officers and men is equally very paramount. I acknowledge that the current management of the force has been proactive in ensuring the prompt promotion of officers and men, as well as in the payment of insurance or insurances to the families of the diseased officers. I want to encourage you to keep it up. Such gestures should be sustained as it motivates officers to give in their best and to always serve with all their might. As you embark upon the odious task of this strategic retreat, Please do also find time to explore and savour what Imo State has to offer in terms of hospitality and tourism. I'm confident that by the time you leave, you will be looking forward to for another opportunity to return back to Oweri. Once again, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your role. I want to particularly thank Nigerian police and other sister agencies for your role in restoring peace in our state. Welcome to Imo State, the Eastern Heartland. I wish all a very fruitful retreat and a memorable stay in Imo State. At the end of this retreat, may you all, by the grace of God, travel back safely to your various destinations. May God bless all of us. Mr. President, your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, one of the most useful, one of the most critical, one of the most important human attributes is hope. Hope sustains interest. Hope makes people committed. When people have lost hope in a project or an idea, they have lost completely any interest in that idea. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in the course of his welcome remarks, the Inspector General of Police said that the Governor of Imo State, who is appropriately named Hope, has given hope to the Nigeria Police. I believe there are people in Imo State who will also agree that he has given hope to Imo State. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this event, the fallout of this event, is something that Nigerians also need to have hope in the electoral process. Can we please put our hands together one more time for His Excellency, Senator Hope. Uzadima, the governor of Imo State. Your Excellency, Mr. President, very distinguished lady. Thank you, my people, for watching. If this is your first time visiting this channel, please click on that red subscription button and click on the notification bell for more of my political news coming your way. See you in my next video and bye-bye. <laughs>